Two Rivers man headed to prison for sexual assault of a child. Lawmakers to consider raising the tobacco age limit to 21. Manitowoc County announces new Crime Stopper tool. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Thursday, November 7th, 2019. A Two Rivers man will spend five years in prison for sexual assault of a child. 20-year-old Tyler James was sentenced this week for the assault that involved an 11-year-old girl. According to the criminal complaint, James engaged in sexual activity with a child on two occasions late last year. He was convicted of a charge of second-degree sexual assault of a child, and James was also sentenced to extended supervision to follow his prison term. Authorities responded to the numerous crashes throughout the morning on Wednesday due to the heavy snowfall. Most of the accidents in Sheboygan County were fender benders, and there were also several reports of cars in the ditches. Officials say there were several crashes on I-43 near State Highway 42 and also near State Highway 57. According to the Sheboygan County Emergency Communications Center, there were actually more than 90 calls during a two-hour span on Wednesday morning when the snowfall was at its heaviest. On a regular day, they get about 20 calls in that time span. The Sheboygan County Sheriff's Office says there were 14 property damage crashes, 13 vehicles in ditches, and only one injury which was minor. No serious injuries were reported in Sheboygan County. Green Bay Police, meanwhile, received about 25 reports of crashes by 8.15 yesterday morning. According to the Brown County Sheriff's Office, there were numerous reports of crashes on state 172. Elsewhere in Fond du Lac County, multiple crashes were reported on I-41 and US-151 and in Sockville. One person was killed in a car crash on I-43 and the driver, a man from Milwaukee, struck a disabled semi on I-43 near the exit ramp to Highway 33. A new bill making its way through the state assembly would raise a minimum age to purchase and consume tobacco products to 21. The bill was introduced this week in response to the outbreak of illnesses and deaths related to electronic cigarettes or vaping products. Officials say it's also aimed at slowing the growth to, of the habit among school-aged children. As part of the law, the sales of traditional tobacco and nicotine products such as chew, cigarettes, and cigars would also be limited to those over the age of 21. It would also be illegal to provide electronic cigarette paraphernalia to anyone under the age of 21. Several states across the nation have implemented or considered similar laws. Others, like Michigan and Massachusetts, have implemented temporary bans on vape products. The Assembly's Committee on Substance Abuse and Prevention held its first hearing on the measure Wednesday. The bill comes with bipartisan support and would need to pass both the Assembly and the Senate before going to Governor Evers. A prison sentence of 25 years was handed down Tuesday to a former vice president of Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce Board. 62-year-old Stephen Steinpress was found guilty back in September and was sentenced for sexual assault of a child. He was also sentenced to 10 years of extended supervision. Steinpress, who also owned the Bowling Pro Shop at Anchor Lanes in Elkhart Lake since 1981, repeatedly assaulted a juvenile family member over the course of five years. According to court documents, Steinpress also ran the Sheboygan County Bowling Association for about 25 years. Manitowoc County residents have a new tool for fighting crime. 
P3 is a web-based anonymous crime reporting system that gives quick access for mobile device and computer users alike. Tipsters can report crime information anonymously and securely using P3, which can be downloaded free from the App Store or Google Play. The Manitowoc County Law Enforcement Agencies are participating in P3 for gathering information as well as communicating update and reward information back to the tipsters. P3 can also be accessed online through the link posted with this story on our website. Finally, dozens dead and hundreds in the hospital. Both health officials and lawmakers are looking for the answers about vaping and e-cigarettes. So this has now impacted almost every state of the union, and the common de denominator is that these young people and older people are vaping, said Senator Tammy Baldwin. It is why she called for a hearing to get answers on vaping-related injuries, and that request was heard by the Senate Help Committee, which will hold a hearing next week on November 13th. Baldwin tells Fox 11 at least one government agency is responsible. The Food and Drug Administration has been very lax about the whole issue of vaping. When you see products with flavors that would only appeal to children, then fl frankly, it is very clear that the industry is trying to get children to vape. But it is more than marketing that, marketing that Baldwin has a problem with, and health professionals agree. There's absolutely no good data to this point and time to show that vaping cuts down on smoking. There are some studies that are very short term and a maximum of six months or so that would have shown maybe. But at the end of the day, once you follow out those patients for or those people out for about a year or so, everyone is still smoking. This doctor is a Prevea Health lung doctor that treats people with vaping-related injuries firsthand. He tells Fox 11, adv advertising e-cigarettes is safer than traditional cigarettes because they have fewer toxins, which is the problem. A traditional cigarette is particularly toxic, and it is very, very toxic. So for you to say to me, I am safer than something that is super toxic does not make you safe. The hearing will be held in Washington, D.C. on November 13th. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Tuesday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.